Roll20 is a web-based virtual tabletop. That means there's no software to download. As long as you have a web browser and an internet connection, you can use Roll20. It can roll dice, move around tokens, play cards, and a host of other features. All you really need to get started at Roll20 is a free account. Okay, once you have your account made, you're all ready to head into your game. More than likely, you got invited to Roll20 by a GM who sent you a game link invite. And now that you're logged into your free account, click that link. It'll bring you directly to your game's details page. Here you can see when the next game will take place, who's been invited to your game, and of course, the all important launch game button. Go ahead and click that button. Welcome to the Roll20 Virtual Tabletop. First things first, when you first open up a game, your browser will ask you to allow Roll20 to use your camera and microphone when you're in game, so that the other players and the GM can see and hear you. Once you say yes, you're all set. Now you can always change your audio and video settings by simply going to the top right corner of the screen, clicking the game settings gear icon, then scrolling down towards the bottom under video and audio chat options. Here you can change the audio and video inputs or disable your video and audio altogether. Great, we're all set up. Let's take a look at the chat section. In the top right corner, click the icon that looks like two talking bubbles. This is the chat section, and it's really the brain of the game. This is where all your rolls and results will take place. If someone rolls dice from a character sheet, the results will show up here. If you need to communicate secretly with another player or GM, this is where you'll do it. We have some chat tips right below, like how to roll some dice using only text commands or how to whisper in game. If you're looking for a full list of chat capabilities, including images and exploding dice, check out the link in the description. Okay, let's go back to the main menu bar again. Click the icon that looks like a newspaper. This is your journal section. This is where any handouts or character sheets your GM has made available to you will show up. If this section is blank for you, your GM might not have gotten around to sharing them with you yet. If they're having trouble sharing, just let them know they can click the Show to Players button in the top right corner of the handout. This handout will automatically be added to your section. Depending on what game you're playing, this section might be a little bare at the start, but it might soon fill up as you continue your campaign. Okay, let's go back to that menu bar. The next icon in the list is the Compendium section. Not all games on Roll20 will have a Compendium but a lot do, like Dungeons & Dragons or Call of Cthulhu. Think of the compendium section like your own little wiki for quick searching. For instance, if you're playing D&D and want to look up a spell on the fly, type in the name of the spell in the search bar and Roll20 will search all the D&D books you own to find the results. Check the description for the growing list of compendiums that Roll20 currently supports. Now the next icon in the menu is the jukebox. If your GM is playing music, it'll show up here. And lastly, we have the Collections tab, which looks like three dots and dashes. Here you'll be able to add macros, show card decks, and click on any rollable tables your GM might have provided for you. If your GM hasn't mentioned this section, you probably won't be utilizing it that much. Okay, let's click back on the chat, the two talking bubbles, and check out the rest of the table. Now the center of the screen, you guessed it, is the main tabletop. This is where your GM will put maps and tokens for players to interact with. Now here's something, your GM might not make all tokens available for you to move, so you might find yourself not being able to click on everything. Remind them to share control with you by holding down the shift key and double clicking on that token. Then they can go to the top right hand corner of the sheet, click edit, and add your name to the can be edited and controlled section. Great, it looks like we have control. Now let's click on another token. You'll notice three radial bubbles show up at the top. Depending on what game you're playing, this can represent just about anything, from a token's power or defense or even health. Below that you have a gear icon that leads to the token settings. This is where you can change your token's name, update your token bar information, or add an aura to your token. Now, next to the gear icon below the token, we have this token status markers. 
This helps keep track of any conditions that might be affecting our token in game. Maybe they're moving really slowly, but just for this part of the game, or maybe they're being really stealthy. Here's where you can turn those statuses on and off in your game. Now, if you wanna see a token's character sheet, hold shift and double click your token. Here you'll see your character's bio and info along with their character sheet. Depending on what game you're playing, your character sheet will have click to roll abilities, meaning just click the sheet and roll 20 will roll the dice and do the math for you. Just make sure to check the chat for roll results. Now, if you wanna roll from chat, it's easy. Simply type in forward slash R, then the number and type of dice you wanna roll. For example, if I wanna roll my D20, I just type in forward slash R, one D20 and hit enter. Perfect. Oh, here's a little tip. If you double click the chat icon, those two talking bubbles, the chat will pop out in a new window. This is great for rearranging your desktop so you can see the board and the chat at the same time. Okay, speaking of rolling dice, you can roll dice directly on the tabletop, even without a character sheet. On the top left side of the screen, hover over the D20 icon and the dice roller will open up. From here, you can roll all different types of dice. If you need to roll three D6, go down to the D6 and go over to three. Great. For more details on the dice roller, like exploding dice for shadow run or fudge dice for fate, check the link in the description below. There's some other helpful tools in the toolbar besides rolling. You can draw right on the tabletop by using the draw tool. Hover over the little paintbrush in the toolbar. From here, there's a few options. You can draw a shape by clicking the draw shape tool. Just click and drag and you got a square or hold down alt and click and drag and you got a circle. This is perfect for setting the areas of your spells. If you click the draw freehand tool, you can draw directly on the tabletop. This is great for drawing characters or, or mapping out a plan of attack. Now the polygon line tool lets you draw straight lines between points. Simply click a point and then click another point. The line will fill in between. When you're done drawing, make sure to click on the arrow tool in the top of the toolbar to switch back to select move. Now another great tool that you might be using is the ruler. Right in the middle of the toolbar is a little circle with a ruler coming out of it. When you have this selected, you can click and drag between tokens or points on the map and it'll tell you how many feet are in between them. This is perfect for seeing if that goblin's within range. Great! You should be all set to play when it's game time. If you want more details on the topics mentioned in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description below. Now have fun gaming!